house during the summers when I was in high school and you know did all of that. But I, my love for animals was so great because I was an only child and I wanted to be a vet. So I was on my way to college, I was in New York City with my parents, uh, age barely 18, 17, and I'm this pianist that I knew in New York, uh, I worked with at the Pittsburgh Playhouse, and he lived there, so I called him. He said, come on up, up Shirley, we'll sing a few tunes. So I went to his apartment, and he said, listen, Rogers and Hammerstein's casting director is having open auditions today for anybody that wants to sing for him. And they did that about every two weeks because their shows, they had three shows running on Broadway then, and their shows ran so long that they had to keep replacing chorus people all the time. So they would have these open auditions. He said, why don't you go and try it? Now, I'd never been to a, a, an audition of any kind. I was this little town, this little town of 800 people. And um, I said, oh, I, I, I don't think I can do that. Come on. He said, yes, geez, just try it out. He said, Let's see what happens. Well, he convinced me. And we, it, we rehearsed a couple of, of songs. And I stood in line with everybody else all the way around the block with my music, waiting in line to get on the stage to sing for the casting director. Finally made it, sang for him, and he said, what have you done? And I said, <clears throat> nothing. <laughs> he, said, he said, well, Miss Jones, um, could you wait just a few moments? I'm gonna call Mr. Rogers in to hear you personally. Now, you do understand, I barely knew who Mr. Rogers was. <laughs> I was not sure, so I said, okay. So he just, just happened to be across the street rehearsing his orchestra for Oklahoma, the City Center Symphony, that was about to go out, out on another road tour. And Richard Rogers had a, a thing about rehearsing his orchestras and, and his chorus all the time before they went out on a tour. Well, I waited, it was just about 15 minutes, and all of a sudden the doors open to the theater and this man comes walking down the aisle and he said, Miss Jones, and I said, <clears throat> yes. Uh, I said, um, what'd you say your name was again? <laughs> Richard Rogers. <laughs> well, he never forgot that moment. <laughs> well, I sang for him, same songs, and he said, uh, same questions, what have you done, where have you been, nowhere, I'm on my way to college. He said, could you wait 20 minutes, I'm gonna call Oscar Hammerstein at home. <laughs> and have him come and hear you. I said, well, I guess so. But my pianist said, Shirley, I don't know what I'm gonna do. He said, I have an airplane to catch. It was a, some kind of holiday weekend, I think Thanksgiving. And he said, I can't wait with you. And Roger says, don't worry, we'll think of something. He left, I stood there, Oscar Hammerstein arrived. And he said, do you know the score of Oklahoma? And I said, well, uh, <clears throat> I think I know the music, but I don't know the words. And of course, I'm talking to the lyricist, you understand. <laughs> he said, never mind, I happen to have a score here. And he had the score of Oklahoma. He said, we have the full city center symphony across the street. You can come over and sing with this symphony. <laughs> Now, do you understand what this was? I'd never heard a symphony, seen a symphony, let alone sing with one. He had, the two gentlemen took me across the street. He handed me the score of Oklahoma. I held it up in front of my face so I couldn't see them. And I sang, Oklahoma, people will say we're in love and oh, what a beautiful morning with a city center symphony. Well, I never got to college. <laughs> amazing, amazing career. We have time for a couple of questions from the audience. If anybody has a question, just raise your hand. And right here, yes, sure. With Bert, he's asking, about a he's asking if there, there was a special chemistry between Burt Lancaster and myself when we were filming the scenes. Burt was, by the way, an incredible teacher as well. I mean, as I said, you know, he was producing. Yes, I did feel that. 
Uh, I have a, a, a series, an eight minute uh, a series of film clips uh, that I show when I do my concerts, you know, and most of the clips are me kissing every major movie star in Hollywood. <laughs> And everybody, all the ladies always ask me at the end of the concert, who was the best kisser? Burt Lancaster. <laughs> yes, we had quite a feeling about each other. And, and, and as I said, he was a teacher too. I mean, he, he was, you know, he, he knew his business, he knew his craft, and he helped me a lot. Kissing all these major stars, that was on film, right? Uh, yes, it was all the movies that I did. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, there, it's in all the it's in the clips that I show before my concert. You know, everybody from Marlon Brando to Glenn Ford, to you name it. You've worked with everybody. I mean, all everybody. Of I mean, mm -hmm. Bedtime Story, which I don't know if yeah. you've seen that with David Niven and Anne and Marlon Brando was the forerunner to Dirty Rotten Dirty Scoundrels. Rotten Scoundrels. Yeah. Other questions? Oh, okay, Marty, right, right there. It's my husband. <laughs> Maybe that was the question you were asking me, and I didn't quite get to it. <laughs> Somebody not related to Shirley. Right no, there. no, we didn't, darling. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yes. Yes, ma'am. Oh yes, well, I have, my oldest grandchild is 28, she's a graduate of UCLA, my youngest is one year, and uh, I have 10, and yes, yes, the older ones, of course, have seen all the films, yeah, and are very, very excited about them, I mean, they're, 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 they're lovely, they, you know, I have a 28-year-old, a 24-year-old, and, a, you know, so all the way down the line.